This is the final part of the bank login scam and we'll find out much more about how they work and who these scammers are. In part one I got a phone call supposedly from BT but in fact it was scammers from Calcutta or Kolkata in India. Terminated from the scammer stole a file from my desktop but unbeknown to him this file gave me full access to his PC. And with that access I was able to observe their scams in action and find out exactly who they were. Critical alert from Michael what I observed over the next few days was these scammers taking inbound calls from people who had received the same message that I had. 99% of the time, the person on the end of the phone knew it was a scam and the call was quickly hung up. This is Roy, how may I help you? Thanks for calling BT, this is Roy, how may I help you? So Roy was answering these calls all day and a small proportion of them were successful. They used three different methods to try and get money off people. The first method is the old tried and trusted tech support scam method where they persuade someone to download TeamViewer and persuade them they have a virus. Okay, now madam, you are successfully connected to our BT server. Okay, you don't need to do anything. Now what? Now what I'm going to do madam, I'm going to transfer this line to one of my senior technician. Okay, and he will be help you with all your problems. Okay, you can tell him what's your issue. Okay, yeah. Hello. Thank you for... The victim, thinking she was speaking to BT, described some computer and Wi-Fi issues she was having. The scammer leapt on this opportunity. Well, ma'am, let me tell you, let me tell you, your internet is not working fine. That is why you are facing trouble with your printer and shortly your laptop will also not work because we have been receiving some error and warning reports. That is why, madam. And you are speaking with right now to the Jordan Amarante, the senior supervisor, all right? So what exactly you can see on your screen? Okay. Can you see BT? Yes, BT Technical Department. This scammer ran through the very standard tech support scam from this point. He just got the victim to run Event Viewer. He then attempted to black out her screen, which didn't seem to work very well. And then he got her to type something on the command line. He got her to type Start Email and Banking Security, followed very quickly by the Tree command. But the last part differs because the scammer explains that the only way to install security is to log on to your online banking. And bizarrely, people are compliant and will log on right in front of the scammer. The scammer of course notes down all of these login details and in a lot of cases is able to access the bank account afterwards. Although the scammer can't see the passcode that this customer is typing, they can and do install keyloggers. If the password is visible or this keylogger is installed, the scammer has full access to this person's bank account. Once the victim has logged into their bank account, the scammer doesn't hesitate to disable their keyboard and mouse and blacken their screen. He records everything he needs to get back into this account at a later date. And of course, TeamViewer doesn't just work on PCs. Here's the scammer connected to a Samsung mobile phone and he's looking through the various apps here to see if he can find some mobile banking apps. For them this is an even better target because it usually only requires one password. And because the scammer has access to both the mobile app and the online bank account it's easy for him to set up a new payee. I'm very tempted to reveal the bank account details that this scammer is using but there's a chance that this is yet another innocent victim on its way to be laundered to India. Once the new recipient is set up, they gain access again to the customer's phone and they look for the message from the bank. Whilst this was happening, I was on the phone to Santander to prevent this poor person being ripped off. Again, she had a very close call here. Here you can see our scammer Roy creating a fake check to the value of £15,000. He will tell whoever he's going to send this to that they can keep 1000 of the 15000 but they will have to send $14,000 to another bank account of the scammer's choosing. 
Inevitably, the check will bounce and our victim is left 14,000 in the red. To work out who needs to sign the check, this guy has to look up the name of the CEO of BT. He's hoping to see what his signature looks like. He can't find the signature online, so instead he looks for some general handwritten articles which look like signatures and he uses this instead. So this is what his final check looked like and as you can see he even kept in the generic numbers at the bottom of the check. I don't know how anyone could fall for a scam like this. And bizarrely before he sent this check by email he even had to correct his own misspelling of British Telecom. I later contacted the person who they sent this check to, his name is Michael, and I just wanted to make sure that he didn't send £14,000 of that money to some other bank account, but he assured me he didn't. Uh, so the sort covered everything here, see? Yeah. I, I kept them and I thought, well, that's great. Uh, I think you did a very good thing there because I see they're, they have actually suspended that account, uh, which is good. That means uh, potentially someone else may not be ripped off, so thank you for doing that. Yeah, well, <laughs> it, it, I mean, the point is, uh, as the saying goes, if it looks too, too, uh, too good, it probably is. And he's right, of course, it's sound advice. Anything which looks too good to be true probably is. And the last method is, as you saw in part two, simply phone up people and ask for all of their credit card and bank details. This allows the scammers to go in and simply create a brand new online bank account on behalf of the victim. And almost without exception, the people who fell for this type of scam were well in their 80s. Here you can see the date of birth of one of their victims. So who exactly is it that isn't afraid to rip off pensioners? Well, I was able to root around their machines to find out how they work and where they get their data from. Here you can see some statistics on some of their calling. I had a look at what the VC dial administration looked like. Here you can see all of their call data the first two rows alone account for about 100,000 UK numbers. I had a look at some of their stats and in a file with 58,000 UK numbers, around about half of those will actually generate a call that is picked up, but they will only ever generate a few leads from all of this. I've handed the data that I managed to download from this VC dialer over to BT, but I'm pretty sure this isn't a leak from their database. The reason that I know this is I saw my own details in there and it had fake information and I only ever gave that fake information to a survey call which sounded suspiciously like an Indian person trying to gather some data. Below I had access to all of the files on their PC. Many of them proved very unfruitful. That was until I spotted a scammer trying to renew his Skype account. Initially, his first name was set up as Telstra and the surname Australia, but he quickly changed this to BT United Kingdom. He then proceeded to renew his Skype subscription for another three months. He could be using one of his victim's credit cards here, so I've had to blur it out. But when he went back to look at the confirmation email, I noticed that he had also signed in with a different ID this time with the name Rajesh Roy. I'm reasonably sure this is his real name because not only did his ID appear here, but when I looked at the password stored, there was also one which uses the word Raj as well. But there was at least one other person using this PC and on one of the days, I noticed someone logging into an Indian bank account. And although I'm loath to blank out some of these details, I have to do so because I'm not 100% certain that this is our scammer. However, I'm reasonably sure that this is him. And his name is Braj Kishore Singh. And if this really is the guy that talked to me, then I have his mobile number, his home address, and all of his bank account details. And here's a request. If you live in Kolkata, and are sick of these guys, 
please give me a hand with bringing these guys to justice. I have all the information and I'm prepared to hand this over to an appropriate authority in the Indian police if you can give me that help. Shortly after I uploaded part 2 of this video series, I lost my access. Obviously the scammers are on to the fact that one of their PCs is compromised. So I'll leave this video with some facts about who this organisation is and who works for them. As always, I have to thank the people who sponsor me via Patreon. The Platinum tier people are on the screen right now and if you can sponsor me this way, the link is in the description below and at the top of the screen. I'm also on Twitter at JimBrowning11 and don't forget to hit the bell icon for future updates.